Well, I was already awake. Um, it's coming back from Medjool Road. Got to Portobello. Down my friend, met my friend at 1.15. I got to Portobello Road at about 20 past one. I looked up, all I could see was smoke. Flames was blaring. I couldn't tell whether the, I knew it was one of the two high rise. I couldn't tell whether it was Winstable or Grenville. By the time I got to Lab Grove, alongside the flyover, realized it was Grenville. I said, oh my God came flying, running down Lancaster Road. I got to this point and uh, I just watched that fire climb up the left-hand side of the building uh, like as if it was crawling up on, like as if it was paper. The way it, 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 it flew up, it was, it, was, it, was, it was terrifying. And then I realized it was the paneling, the paneling that they had been stuck, they'd been put in, in the last bit of work that they did, it was the panelling they put on the outside to make the estate look good, yeah? So when I got to this point, it wasn't blocked off, but my first instinct was to, because I live on this estate, because around the Grenville is the old Lancaster West, and this is the new Lancaster West. So my first instinct was to go straight through my estate, in which I was shouting out continuously, Grenville, is, uh, Grenville Towers is on fire. I basically woke up the whole estate and then everyone said, oh, okay, oh my God, because they got family, cousins living over there. Everyone started coming out and uh, they asked me to go around the whole estate. When I did, I came out the entrance there where it was blocked off. And uh, the main problem was, is because on this side of the building, that's the only, that's where the staircases are. So because I know how the building is, I know that there's no way they could get down the stairs because the stairs was on fire. Did you know anyone who lives there? Do you know anyone? I know everybody around this estate for over 45 years and I dread to see the, uh, the pictures of, of people because um, white, black, pink, yellow, brown, I, I guarantee there'll be over 20 people that I know well. And you helped the fire brigade as well uh, when they first arrived? When I got to this point, uh, I said, that's it, I've got to help. So I, 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 I ripped, I grabbed a, a Santander bike, uh, surrounded the perimeter, got round to Latimer train station, in which by that time, must have been about 20 to one, uh, fire, fire brigade was uh, tempting to, to get their, their water hoses down to the estate. But it seemed like the problem was they couldn't get any water from the, from the actual around the building they had to get the water from latimer road which is like a t there's a slope that leads to the building it's about 200 meters and the, the the fire brigade bless them they they was knackered they was walking with these big rules yeah and he's carrying them I, I i slipped past the police i said look i've got energy use my energy i said where do you want it he says we need it by that fire station so i ran down took one run it down took another one run it down took another one run it down and then they, they rolled them out, and then after about 15 minutes, bam, we got the pipe, and the water started to flow, so they could get the water, you know. And uh, well, Mark, it was great that you were there on hand to to do that, and we're hearing so many stories of local residents helping out. Basically, from what I can visualise, because it's the fire ripped on this side, but if I was to speculate, obviously they, those who made ah. Oh, those who made it out of their house would have realised they can't get through the stairs, but the back end, there was no fire. So everyone must have ran to their neighbour's house and they was all patiently waiting, because when we got to Latman, we're looking on the right hand side of the building, you could see all the people. But the fire worked its way up on the side in an angle. When it reached to the top, it just got onto the cladding and came steaming down. So I'm pretty sure that most people that they find passed away in that building is going to be on the right hand side of the building. But it must have took about about an hour for it to get from top to bottom. I think that's what we're hearing from so many people, yeah. that it just licked up the building. The flames yeah, just it, it cleaned, took hold so quickly. Those panelings, it was, it was chewing up the panelings like there was paper. That was, that was what it was feeding off of. And also, like, uh, uh, you could tell it was like the, um, the, uh, insulation the uh, foam it was that was that was giving it the constant all the smoke in the, the fire you can see it spitting out terrible and um it got to the point where um mothers were throwing their babies out of the windows man
You, is that something you actually saw? I didn't visualize it. Some guy. Well, joining us now from Nottingham is Matt Rack. He is the General Secretary of the Fire Brigades Union. Uh, Mr Rack, uh, of course, uh, universal gratitude for the uh, work that your members and other emergency services are doing. Uh, what are your thoughts on this disaster? I can't recall seeing an incident like this in a tower block. Uh, in my career in the fire service or as a general secretary, it's absolutely appalling. And I think everyone's thoughts are with the people who, who have lost their lives and who have been injured uh, or whose lives have been disrupted by this terrible incident. And of course, with the firefighters and other emergency service workers uh, who are dealing with it uh, all through the night and continue to do so. But it's uh, absolutely uh, remarkable, horrible scenes that the fire has taken hold so quickly across the whole of the building. Uh, if tower blocks like this, firefighters would normally expect to fight a fire from within the building. Uh, they would would expect to find a safe uh, fire escape to to you know, dry rising mains and so on. Other uh, engineered structures to allow uh, firefighters to tackle a fire in a flat in a building like this. And clearly, that hasn't happened on this occasion. Given the standards, uh, building standards which we have in this country, should it be possible for a fire to uh, develop in this way? No, it should not be possible for a fire to develop in this way and there will clearly have to be a major investigation into what has happened here. Uh, but obviously there were building regulations in the time when the block would have been built and then there may have been uh, refurbishments or alterations to the building subsequently and clearly the owners and managers of the property uh, are required uh, to ensure that, the, that, that any changes meet the, the necessary safety requirements and, and that will have to be looked at. I, I can't, it's hard to speculate on anything at the moment. We don't know the facts, uh, but obviously there will need to be a th very thorough investigation of, of how this has happened. From, from uh, what you've heard from, from colleagues uh, and your own expertise, uh, do you have any idea, I mean, I know you don't want to speculate unnecessarily, but any idea of what, what appears to have happened? People are talking about the cladding of the building may be the reason why it spread so quickly. Again, I, I, I've heard those reports on the press from, from uh, residents and commentators this morning. Clearly, uh, there, there may be mechanisms, that, or there are systems whereby cladding is applied to buildings, and the owners and the people doing the work, the contractors, uh, would clearly be expected to comply with, uh, to undertake risk assessments and, and ensure that any alterations, including cladding, would comply with the necessary requirements so that uh, this shouldn't be happening if it is the cladding, but we don't know that as yet. So clearly that's something that we that needs to be investigated subsequently. So the London Fire think? Brigade will be carrying out an investigation, but I think there probably needs to be a much wider investigation as well. Jim Fitzpatrick has also raised the question of, of sprinklers in the building or the absence of them. Yeah, most domestic uh, properties like this uh, will tend not to have sprinklers within them. There has been some debate, I mean, there's, there's a long running debate about sprinklers in buildings in, in the UK uh, and uh, there's, uh, they clearly can assist, they clearly can very much assist firefighters and, and deal with situations. There are also domestic types of sprinklers. Uh, that they, they wouldn't necessarily be in a, in a building uh, like this uh, because people would expect that in a building like this a, f a fire would normally be contained to the flat or room of origin and firefighters would be able to go in and tackle the fire in the flat or room of origin and that's, that's, that's the expectation, that's how buildings are constructed and that's how the fire service would normally operate. And after a catastrophic fire like this, presumably the building will, will have to be demolished. I, 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 I wouldn't want to speculate on that. I've, I've heard that there's structural engineers down to see what, you know, to monitor for the safety of the fire crews who are still on the ground. Uh, yes, I, I, I'm not a building engineer, so I wouldn't know that, but I, I suspect that's one possibility, certainly. And, and finally, uh, Mr. Rack, uh, members of the public are obviously very concerned about this situation. Uh, if they want to help, is there anything they can do? I, I don't know. I mean, that's something we will look at as well today to see what we can do as an organisation to help uh, the people affected by this. And I'm sure that 
other agencies and uh, will be interested in setting up some sort of support mechanisms for the for the uh, particularly the residents and, and, uh, and their friends and family of those affected by this tragedy certainly uh, as an organization the fire brigade union would want to assist with that as well but i don't have inf any information on that currently matt rack of the fire brigade union thank you very much indeed for joining us this is the dreadful scene in west london at the grenfell tower you're watching sky news